on the PGA Tour. Taylor Pendrith ends up winning his first PGA Tour win. He was pretty darn lucky to win. Ben Coles should have won that tournament. Also seeking his first PGA Tour victory, he went into the 18th hole, the easiest hole on the golf course, with a one-shot lead, and he was there in two, just less than 30 feet from the cup. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. The Bostonian versus the book. Do Leafs fans stop watching hockey now, or do they, do they root for other Canadian teams, Cam? No, I'm not a proponent of that, and it's actually kind of bothered me that, like, all the people in Toronto are kind of like, oh, now I'm going to cheer for the Oilers. Like, why? What do you? What was your affiliation with the Oilers? Like, Canucks <laughs> still exist. Like, I don't lose automatically and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to cheer for the Ottawa Senators because the, 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 no, I cheer for my bets. The Bostonian versus the book. A lot of books and outside of the New York area, the uh, the Canes are actually favored in game one of this series. I'm seeing it right now. I'm looking. I see a minus 115 Canes, Rangers minus 105. I like the six and seven games prop like I, like I took with Boston, Toronto, which we now know is going to cash. Uh, I think it's got a chance to go the distance. It's going to be a long, tough, close series. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The Cam Rising stuff last year with Utah? Three months of pretending he was questionable with a torn ACL? Ridiculous. It's a lot of gray right now when it comes to this stuff. And, and it, we really are. When people say we're in like the second or third inning of sports betting, that's why I agree. Because there's so many of those situations that are very, very difficult to explain to a novice. Game time decisions. Only on sports. Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Morenci, the pips, the players, the hustlers, the people, the bust them, and everybody else in between. The Thursday night throwdown has begun. And the NBA Eastern Conference Finals, of course, have begun. Game two rolls on uh, right now. We're going into the fourth quarter of play. The Celtics have a 13 point lead in this game. The Pacers are currently getting 12 and a half points. It's 93 to 80. The in game total is 227. And a half. I had my concerns about this game getting away from the Pacers. And in fact, I threw out a final score twice. I did not bet this final score, but I threw it out there twice. And I hope I'm wrong because it means I would lose my Pacer bet. But I said, we're taking the Pacers. We're hammering the over. And we're going to hope for the best with the Pacers. And, uh, you know, we, we, we like the over a lot. And even the over is still in question right now. And I said, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if this game ended up 126 to 114. Like, Boston are going to be a little bit better than they were in game one. Siakam can't do any more uh, than he is. But we also know the Pacers can go on runs. I don't think they're going to win this game. But can they cover the point spread? Maybe. Still. 13. Hopefully we can get the over as well. Let's try to get them both. Pacers just uh, hit a bucket to get it going in the fourth quarter. 93-82 to 82 in Boston. Uh, we've got the Western Conference uh, Finals going on right now. The National Hockey League. The Edmonton Oilers and the Dallas Stars. This is all about oil money. Slick. Uh, the Oilers and the Dallas Stars. Uh, a lot of cowboy hats at uh, at both games. So the Oilers are up 2-1 in this hockey game because, of course, they are. Because, of course, I took the Oilers in the first period out of pick them, so we got a push. And I went, like, larger on over one and a half for the first period. I'm like, oh, this is going to be free-flowing. They're going to score. Like, there will be goals in the first period. Uh, of course, nothing in the first period. And then they score – three goals in like five minutes to open up the second period. So it's 2-1. It's been 2-1 since uh, for the Edmonton Oilers. The Oilers are currently minus 300 uh, in this game. I've got the Oilers plus 110 to win the game. Might have been plus 115. I think it might have went up, but whatever. I've got the Oilers as an underdog to win this hockey game. And uh, we got the Oilers plus two and a half goals in an alternate uh, parlay with the two legs that already hit from the World uh, Championships from earlier today. The World Hockey Championships. Great stuff. We swept the board, actually, today with the World uh, Hockey Championships. So it's 2-1. 
I'm on Edmonton, but I would say there's value right now. Just sheer betting from a sheer betting perspective. There's value on the Dallas Stars. They're a lethally good team. They're in this game. It's a one goal game and you're getting plus 225. Yeah, you can't argue it. I, I'm not going to do it because uh, I've got Edmonton, right? So I'm not, I don't like to play both sides. Maybe if Edmonton get up by a couple of goals, I'll look at Dallas uh, plus some goals here. But my major concern right now is the over of this basketball game. And my major concern is the double-edged sword. Listen, we've swept the board in the NBA uh, conference finals so far. It's been nice. We've been crushing the overs. We haven't lost a bet yet. Yet, you know, I, you always know that that's going to come to an end. And the nightmare scenario here is that the Celtics cover the number and it goes uh, under the number. Like, we need to get out of this with a split at least. And quite frankly, I'm not really overly panicked about the pacer bet. I went a lot larger on the over. So it's all about the over uh, in this game for me right now. So at this point, I really don't even care who scores. Just score. Uh, The Pascal Siakam prop that we played was slick. Uh, Over 31 and a half points, rebounds, and assists, man. Siakam has been absolutely on fire tonight, but he's really the only pacer that's shown up. Uh, Siakam's got 28 points, uh, five rebounds, two assists, but he sort of hit a wall a little bit uh, as this game is going on right now. Nobody else is really giving him anything. Jason Tatum really hasn't done much. 15 points, we got a Tatum prop. His prop closed at 29 and a half. So we got a full house on the program uh, tonight. Drew Martin Betts going to step up and in. We'll talk NBA, NHL, college uh, football, Major League Baseball, and more. The Rage Red Ed Cam Stewart kicks it. Rafael Esparza throws it down with us. Big Card Julio in the house uh, tonight. David Delano. So as I stated, we got a full house. A lot of NBA talk, NHL playoffs, but a lot of other stuff going on. Uh, we'll get some a lot of college football news uh, this week that we'll get to uh, later on. In the program, Siakam coming out of the game uh, right now as he looks defeated as it's a 17-point game. This was the concern that Boston were just going to sort of dial it up a notch and the Pacers were going to hit a wall as this game was going on, which, you know, I knew, but, you know, we're going to ride the Pacers pretty much in every game in this series, and I think we're going to win more than we're going to lose, at least from a betting perspective, but the total... Right, the total dipped all the way down to like 211 and a half. It was a pretty low scoring. It was like, what, 27-25 after the first quarter of play? So it wasn't very high scoring to start. It's opened up a bit. The Pacers aren't going to quit, right? They're only down 15 right now, but the pace is starting to slow down. I do have my concerns about this total. And, man, we had such a strong day today, earlier in the day, on the ice uh, from Prague and the Czech Republic. I'm going to be giving it all back right now on this game. It really is starting to hit a wall. The total is 222 and a half. I've got a 224. It's 222 and a half right now. The Pacers are currently getting 14 and a half points. Pacers are up to 65 to 1 currently right now to win the NBA championship. Celtics minus 200. It'll be even more after the game. We'll get you the updated uh, numbers. So this hockey game uh, has been a fun game. And one of the big difference makers of this game uh, tonight has been Skinner uh, has been Skinner and you know the goaltending we all know that Dallas had the edge coming into this series between the pipes there, you know, no one was going to argue that Skinner's uh, got a bigger body of work and a better resume than Jake Ottinger does but with that being stated Skinner has made some big time saves tonight uh, for the Edmonton Oilers the Dallas Stars were the better team in the first period the Dallas Stars were the ones. Edmonton really didn't have any shots on goal. They, they literally had like one shot on goal with a couple of minutes left in the first period of play. And it was like a feeling out process, but Dallas had a couple of power plays. And Dallas did have a couple of legitimate scoring opportunities and a couple of nice big saves, man. In the slot, you can tell when a goaltender is confident or not. You can see when he's fighting the puck or not. And we say fighting the puck. You'll notice, like, sometimes goalies will stop the puck, but they don't really know where it is, and or it'll it'll bounce off of them right back into into another dangerous area, right? They'll stop it, but they'll they'll they you know, it'll go off their pad right on someone's stick. Good goalies know how to avoid that, right? 
Right, good goalies, you know, sort of like a sponge. The puck hits them and it just sort of stops. And you see that with Swayman at times. I noticed that with Swayman. I was like, wow, this guy, like, is the calmest, smoothest. Like, the puck, like, when it never, whenever it goes near him, there's never a bad rebound. Like, it's just always in control. That's not Skinner's game, but Skinner looks big tonight. He's playing big. Right? You can play big, you can play small, like he's playing big. He looks like confident, he's wide, he's coming out, like he's cutting down angles. Like it's it's a confident netminder that they have uh, tonight. So the Oilers are up uh, 2-1 right now. And uh, we're going to be going into the third period of play with the total set at 5.5 to the under minus 220. Over 5.5 is plus 170. The Oilers are now minus 360, and the Dallas Stars are plus 265. Thinking about this total at um, at five and a half, I think that plus 170 isn't a bad number if you're willing to roll the dice. Although, we'll wait for it to come down a little bit, but I would expect there to be goals in the third period of this game. Look, there were three goals in the second period. You have the danger of the empty net, which we don't really see all that much of, unless I have money on the other team. Then the other team will always score in the empty net. <laughs> but... We see a lot where it's an empty net and nobody actually does score. But that put it this way, the five and a half is definitely in play still. We're already at three, man. All right? Yeah, this third period could get uh, could get crazy. So uh, 2-1 for the Edmonton Oilers. Drew Martin, Beck's going to step up and then let's roll the Thursday night throwdown. Has begun. of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on SportsGrid. And now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm -hmm. so in the same note i'm saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid it's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Lucas is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I'm Ramsey. Let's do this thing. It's a Thursday night uh, throwdown. The Boston Celtics are starting to pull away uh, right now. 104 to 86. We're going to have to hope for a backdoor cover if you're on the Pacers. They just missed a free throw. I'm trying to cry home another over here, which we'll see. It's going to be close. I've got uh, I've got 224, I believe. Let me see. I got, uh, I got 220, yeah, 224, and it's 223 and a half in game right now. If the Pacers could stick a couple of threes, we'll get there. But, like, this game is close to being over. 
It's 104 to uh, to 87 right now. So the Pacers are close to tapping out, but there's still there's still another little run left in them. They don't have all their starters. See, Ackham's not on the floor right now either, but whatever. Let's hope that uh, we can, you know, you're going to win by a point. You're going to lose by a point when it comes to these uh, these totals. Uh, hopefully we can uh, cry this one home. Uh, we're at the intermission right now in uh, in Dallas, Texas, and the Edmonton Oilers are up 2-1. They're currently minus 360, which I think is too high considering it's a one-goal game and the Dallas Stars are actually the favorites uh, in the game. You get the Dallas Stars at plus 265 uh, right now, but I'm on the Edmonton Oilers, so I'm not doing it, but I'm just stating I don't think it's crazy if someone did like the um, the uh, the Stars here. Total is 5.5. It's plus 160, and I actually think that's a lie as well. Let's bring in Drew Martin and Cam Stewart right now. Good to see you, uh, Drew Martin. Your Florida Panthers, big win last night. Good to see you, Cam. How you doing, Drew? I'm doing good, Gabe. Always good to be on with you and Cam. And I'll tell you, how about those Cats? Toughest team in the NHL. For tonight's game, actually, I was looking to get on the Stars, but I, I thought the 30 cents was a little bit too much. Uh, I thought it should have been, you know, maybe like minus 110, minus 115. But I'll tell you this, Gabe, looking forward, I think it's the Panthers' cup, man. I think they're going to take it all. I really do. I think they're going Ooh. to the Stanley Cup. I was thinking about it last night. I actually thought, you know, they're going to make it to the cup, but they're going to lose again. But then, I don't know, maybe they won't lose again. I sort of have always been of the belief that the West or whoever wins the West is going to win. Like, I kind of believe, like, if the Stars get through, I kind of think the Stars are going to win the, the Stanley Cup. And if the Oilers actually get all the way to the Stanley Cup, they're not losing. Like, they're McDavid's going to get it done. They're going to find a way to get it done. But I could be wrong. Like I said, the, the Panthers look damn good, bro. I'm on them against the Rangers. I bought in, and I was uh, I was Johnny Ranger, but I bought in that the Panthers are going to beat the Rangers, Cam. Yeah, I think the Panthers are going to beat the Rangers as well. I'm not sure if, if they're going to beat Edmonton or Dallas, Gabe. Good call by you, Dallas. Uh, it's early right now, but uh, they're just very bad in game ones. As you know, under DeBoer, they've never won. Better road team than home team, but I agree with you 100% with your assessment. Getting Dallas at that price is insane. Skinner's playing really, really good for Edmonton right now. He's made some crucial saves in this game. So I think the over's alive, and I would take Dallas live uh, if you don't have anybody in this race. And I, I have Dallas plus one and a half. I got the over four and a half, and I took Dallas at the start of the game, and I have him in the series. So I'm hoping for uh, a tie game, and then we hit uh, most things. But uh, good luck with your Edmonton play. And the fact to go to overtime as well, and I always talk about how it's not even a great bet to bet a game and go to overtime before the game starts because you get the same damn odds after. And now here's a good example of it. It's plus 260 right now to go to overtime. Whatever, dude. It was plus 280, plus 290 before the game started. So it's a one-goal game. Dallas scores. Like, overtime legitimately is in the cards in this game. You're one goal away from it. And you're getting plus 260 after two periods of play. I'm telling you guys, I've caught on. Like, there's no need to play these overtime games because even if it's tied after the first period, you're still getting like plus 220 or something. Good point. You only lose like 50 cents, and you've already got a feel for the game, Cam. I know, because I bet a lot of these, oh, the game will go to overtime before, and I check the, yep. the odds, and I'm like, why am I doing this? They don't even move that much. Great point, Gabe. And you you saw this with your Vancouver Canucks, too. A um, lot of tight games in, the, in these series. And I got to say this, Edmonton is a team that, had problems holding leads. Remember, even in the final game, three to nothing against Vancouver is three to two. So this is a team that, uh, you know, I think this game could go over time and you're absolutely correct. There's no need to do that anymore. I've, I've learned too. I do it more in game when I'm betting those overtime props, but good call by you early in this game. Uh, the Oilers, uh, their big men are dry is playing great. He's got points in 13 straight. And uh, if they get goaltending, they could beat anybody, but the stars look really good in the second period. They just uh, ran into a hot tender. So, so true. I brought it up last night about how, man, there's New Yorkers everywhere, but there's a lot of New Yorkers, yeah. obviously, that live in the state of Florida now. So it's going to oh, be interesting, man. the the dynamic at the Panther games, and the tickets are going to be super jacked up, but that atmosphere in Florida is going to be lit as well. And I get the I get the enthusiasm. I really do. Like, you know, like the eye, the eye test when you watch these teams, Florida and Dallas sort of look like the best teams in the playoffs, the way that they played. Um, at times, but man, at this stage, guys, anything can happen. Any of these teams can beat any of the teams, in my opinion, except I think the Rangers are just a little bit, they rely too much on too few players and they rely on special teams too much. 
Panthers have like 14 guys that have scored in the postseason. Like they're much deeper. They don't rely on one person or a cut. Like if Kreider doesn't score, where the hell is it coming from for the Rangers? I think the Panthers are going to win the series. I'm just getting worried, Cam and, and, and Drew. I better see it better over five and a half games. I'm starting to think maybe Panthers in five. Rangers better be able to win two games. <laughs> I'm I'm right there. The thing about the Rangers too. I'm worried. Uh, I'm not lying. I'm worried about that. I'm like, man, they might lose it like five. These guys, you're right, four or something. And remember one thing: they won the President's Trophy this year as the best team in the regular season. Always a curse. Yeah, it always is a curse. And and, and with Bob, Florida was smart. They played their backup Stolars a lot in, in the regular season, a lot more than the Rangers did with Shesterkin. Despite Jonathan Quick having a good year as a veteran guy, he's tired, man. He looks really tired, and that's the thing. When you play a team like Florida, they're going to pepper you with shots. They're going to hit you. They're going to grind you into the ground. So that's the thing. you got to be really smart, Gabe, and I'm with you. I think the Panthers actually might tear, take care of these guys in five now. They look like a totally better team. This series, on the other hand, is probably going to go the distance. And Edmonton, either one, Edmonton, Florida will be lit. It would be an intense just from a hockey perspective, the styles uh, that they play. So as far as the basketball game is concerned, 113 to 96 right now. I'll make it 97. We're sort of getting there. Until we're there, we're not there. If we can just get this over home, I'll be I'll be happy and we'll move on and we'll get back to the hockey game. We'll talk some baseball. Drew's got some picks uh, locked and loaded, uh, ready to go. I wonder if Drew has any uh, thoughts on the Florida Gator situation. What a time to be alive in college football when college quarterbacks are suing head coaches for unpaid NIL deals. You owe me 13 million, Napier. the transfer portal it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines and that's why he went out and recruited that talent inside the transfer portal only on sports grid and now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 percent think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm -hmm. so in the same note i'm saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid it's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. Of has let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Arantzi. The pimps, the players, the hustlers, the people that bust them, and everybody else in between. And speaking of people that bust them, actually, if you can, Tommy and company, let's uh, let's roll out. It's not a best of X. This is a uh, what the F is wrong with you. We'll give them a minute to uh, to get this uh, going here. And uh, ah, what's wrong with you? So uh, last week we were wondering what the hell was wrong with Scotty Scheffler as he allegedly 
allegedly ran over a cop, dragged him, assaulted him, and ruined his $80 pants, as uh, the police report. He's been charged with various, like, felonies and assault this and that and all kinds of uh, crimes. And me being the uh, law-abiding uh, citizen that I am, I just automatically assumed that the police were telling the, uh, the truth in Louisville, Kentucky. Except now that we see the actual tape, I have to wonder, if they treat Scotty Scheffler like this, what the hell do they do to the people on the streets of Louisville? I got I to gotta wonder. But we've got, uh, we've got video of the incident of, like, the hit and run. Uh, you guys remember the episode of Seinfeld? When uh, George has a little motor scooter, he's pretending yeah. he's handicapped. He went faster on, in his motor scooter. Like, drunk people from Wisconsin driving around casino floors. Beep, beep. Like, <laughs> like, they're, like they go faster than what Scotty Chef. Like, this is right out of Mall Cop. It's like an old man, like, going two miles an hour. And, <laughs> you know, Kevin James is hanging on. It's like, and if anything, the cop ran and, like, dove into the car. So here's the tape. Look at Scheffler. You see Scheffler's car will pull in here. Not exactly speeding through a roadblock. Look. Hey, hey, hey. And the cop turned his body cam off. He, now now yeah. he's been uh, suspended for this. Like, Good I don't think the Louisville cops are very happy that they've been exposed for being liars. And Because now, i got to be honest, just from a, a true legal perspective, any other case that this guy's ever been on or anything that this police department's done, I'd be like, you're full of crap. You guys mm-hmm. said Scotty Scheffler assaulted you. Seriously, Drew, think about like you're some dude on the street in Louisville. You're not getting a fair shake. They, he's they not consider even this moving. assault. He's look, not he moving. Moving. <laughs> And then look, he's they pull not. him out and rough him up. Look, they're like, get the F out of the car. They're right, like, they they're rough like, him this up. Is, this is nuts. Look, look, the guy's like, get out of the car. <laughs> he grabs him up again. Hey, get up. It's like not even talking. It's like, all right, hey, hey, calm down, everyone. Look, threw him against the car. What happened to this dragon of cop? Yeah, I don't wear I don't wear his pants got ruined either, you big liar. <laughs> Where'd your pants get ruined, bro? <laughs> Seriously, remember they put in a police report. Eighty dollar pants were ruined. Where? Where are your I pants ruined? I can't believe this. The guy didn't even move. Like he did not Guys. even move. Guys. Guys. Uh uh-uh. uh. Step back. Back up, bro. I'm, not, back. I'm, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I've seen I've seen like mass shooters at crime scenes been treated like uh like <laughs> like less than this. So what's Guys. amazing about this is what do we do? they've actually I'm, they I'm said today the he, right now right now he's going to jail. Okay. Okay. He's going to jail and, and it ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> there's, wow. there's, there's nothing you can do about it. Okay. Not you can do about it. Now all right, yeah, listen. I'm, All right, I'm, 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 we got it. I'm, I'm media. So, uh, Drew, I'll tell you right now, I'm never going to a game with you in Louisville or Kentucky, huh? just for the record. Uh, well, there goes our <laughs> Kentucky Derby <laughs> plans off the bucket list. Here we go. Just be I mean, real. I'll tell you this, man. <laughs> There needs to be, like, I've lived it in the United States, all over, friends in California, friends in New York. Unfortunately, I have done a couple nights in the drunk tank. When you are in the southern, the southeastern part of the United States, you get arrested quicker. It's just, it's, it, it's part of being in the south. They arrest you quick. It's not a big deal. You, you, you get a couple hundred dollar fine and you do 20 community service hours and everything, you know, it's not really on your record. Everything's fine. But whenever I tell my friends in California and New York, I'm always like, watch yourself when you come to the South because they just arrest you quicker. They, they, they like, I guess in New York and California, you get away with more with the cops. In the South, it's not really like that. You know, if you if you make a cop mad, you go to jail. I don't know. That's just the way that I, that I kind of read it, Gabe. I, that, that's, that's what I read in my life. I'm and sure. that's why I enjoy the Southeastern Conference on TV from afar. No live game. No, I look at the states I go to. I'm like, nah, I'm not. No, I'm like, it's damn, they're playing, they're, they're playing in Texas. Oh, son yeah. of a... Rest I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, they're playing in Arizona. I'm gone. Oh, I'm, I'm gone. Yeah, yeah, I'm gone Alabama, <laughs> Florida, no thanks. No, no. <laughs> I'm like, Alabama. Florida, nah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> with the on
onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said we need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify in these majors. You, you just you got to go do it, man. Like, and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like, "I'm not." You know what you signed up for, so I, I don't like the pettiness. And um, I, I, I 100% think Taylor Gooch should be in the major championships. Mm -hmm. So, in the same note, I'm saying this, but also it's like, hey, this is the world in which we live in right now, and and you, and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Lucas is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am a Red Sea. So the game goes over the number. We get there. We get there. Uh, it's 121-106. My final score prediction is going to be eerily close. I should have listened to myself and just bet on Boston. I said 126-114. Uh, it's 122-106 right now. But either way, I went big on the over. That was That's what it was all about. So we cash that, baby, and we move on. Drew, how'd you do in this basketball game tonight? Well, I guess I'm still sweating out the uh, the Celtics. I don't have it on right now, but I, I, I laid the nine with the Celtics. And I'll tell you this about your total game uh, in the NBA. As, as I know you know, like sometimes it matters the team that's behind. You want them to score because the Celtics would have uh, taken the air out of the ball, so to speak. It's not like college hoops where they'll just run away with it. Sometimes, you know, they'll just sit on that ball and, and you watch that clock go. So it's good that the Pacers put in a couple baskets for you. No, you're exactly right. If they're a bad offensive team and they're down, you're done. Right, mm -hmm. boss. Like exactly, like the Pacers just did enough, hit enough buckets there. That's what I said about ten minutes ago. I was like, man, we're at the time now where they were down by like eighteen, and I was like, they're gonna quit soon. If like, but if they hit a couple of buckets and keep around twelve, they'll linger. But we get there. The game goes over the number, and then how about last night, man? Luca and Kyrie Irving, unbelievable stuff. Dallas Mavericks. I jumped on the Mavericks bandwagon last night, so I cashed the ticket in game one with them. What are you going to do with game two, Drew? I don't know. I, I'm thinking ride the hot hand. It's nothing I got down personally. To tell you the truth, I wanted to talk to both of you about it. I, I'm thinking I'm thinking ride uh, that plus 176 looks a little uh, looks a little juicy, man. Or it, it, I don't know. Could they go back to back here? Definitely. I'm definitely leaning towards plus five in my pocket. Um, I haven't fired away yet, though, but I'm, I'm thinking about riding this uh, Mavs train here. We haven't seen a lot of close games in the playoffs, a ton of them, but the T-Wolves had played in some close ones. And the, the Mavericks have as well. I think the five actually is at a premium. And, you know, a lot of people are going to buy into the zigzag, the bounce back, that, ooh, Minnesota's going to respond tomorrow night just because they lost the first game. They could win, Cam, but it doesn't mean they're automatically going to win by six points tomorrow. 
It's interesting. Uh, Minnesota, you saw what they do at Denver on the road and then losing their uh, their home games here. You guys could uh, actually be on uh, onto something. Yeah, there. they were 1.0 and 2 to start the That's series. The thing. Exactly. And that is very, very odd for the NBA. That never happens. But this this has happened this time around. So the plus five, I like Minnesota in the series to come back. So I guess if you do, you take them when they're down. And if they don't go down two to nothing, I still think this series is not over, Gabe. I think it's going to go the distance. It's going to be a real classic. But uh, I'm looking at the points as well. So the Baltimore Orioles are leading the White Sox, guys. Um, eight to two. Did you see that their streak came to an end yesterday? One of the most incredible streaks uh, in sports. Like these guys, it was an unbelievable run that the Orioles. Listen, it's still a great run that they're on uh, right now. Uh, but their dominance in series play was unbelievable. As um, this is historic stuff. It was the first time in uh, two years. First time in uh, in two years that they get swept in the regular season. They hadn't been yeah. swept in a regular season since 2022. Drew, it's, it's, crazy absolutely, game. it's absolutely insane. That's like you want to talk about a model, a model of consistency. They didn't get swept for 106 consecutive series. It's unreal. Man, talk about consistency. And you know what that speaks to, Gabe, particularly in the money line sports? Probably NHL is the same. You know it better than, than I do. But in Major League Baseball, betting the money line, they're up over 60 units of profit since 2022 opening day. And it speaks to, hey, if you lose a game, you come back the next day. You don't let losing streaks linger. And for whatever reason, the O's have been able to do that. So it's very correlated here, not getting swept in series and having huge profits. They're, they're probably uh, the, the most profitable team in all of sports around the globe in the last two years, I would guess. Definitely in North American sports. I mean, $100 betters up over $6,000 betting the Orioles blindly since opening day 2022. Just impressive stuff from Baltimore. We're going to hit the market on the, on the other side, actually, as far as the top money uh, money makers and top money burners in Major League Baseball. But to put in context, everybody, of what the Baltimore Orioles have accomplished, 106 consecutive series is without getting swept. The all-time record is 124 consecutive series. It happened in 1942 through 1944, the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cubs won, uh, didn't get swept for 115 consecutive uh, series, 1906 to 1909. So the Orioles just did something that hadn't been done since 1944. That's when you know if something is like, what? Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, I had a broken record that another team is like, no, no, no. Like, it's unheard of. They just did something that hasn't been done in 80 years, <laughs> like, right? Like, you know, unbelievable stuff. To, to do what they've uh, to do what they've done and they're rolling right now, uh, beating uh, the Chicago White Sox. So two one in the hockey game right now. Thirteen minutes left in the third period of play. Let's check in with this in game total here right now. It's uh, four and a half now. Mm. Oh boy, four and a half. That's tempting to the over because Dallas scores, you automatically win. There's two ways to win this bet if you bet the over four and a half. Dallas score. You automatically win is 2-2. Um, and or Edmonton score again and it's 3-1. And then they uh, they bury an empty netter after. There's still 12 and a half minutes left, but time is ticking pretty quickly here. And uh, this would be a big win for the Edmonton Oilers to get it done on the road here, Cam, in game one. It would. But Dallas has lost the first game of all the series. And um, as I say, Gabe, I don't know why they start off slow and then they go on the road and they figure it out. So from a betting perspective, I will be putting more money on Dallas if they lose this game. Well, they haven't played in uh, in six days, too. That's uh, mm -hmm. that, that's something oh. that really comes into play here. Although they, they look pretty good in the first period of play, uh, yeah. actually. All right. So Drew Martin kicking with us, Cam Stewart in the house. So speaking of the uh, the Major League Baseball, the uh, the stock watch. And uh, teams, teams that have been making money, um, it's um, like as as we talk about, unbelievable what the Baltimore Orioles have done over the last uh, couple of seasons. Uh, but it it continues, and uh, they're not the only ones though that are making money this year. And it's really is crazy that the team right now that is the most profitable team in baseball, which I guarantee you, not one person drew would have said 
the Cleveland freaking Guardians would be the most profitable team in baseball. I've learned my lesson fading these guys over the last couple of years, but then they lose Bieber, and it doesn't matter. Here they are right now. They're the number one money makers coming into tonight in Major League Baseball. It's 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 amazing, and I think it speaks to bullpen. You know, it depends what metrics you want to go off of, but they're either the best or the second best bullpen in Major League Baseball. You go by by relief arm whip, you know, walks, hits uh, per nine, and and they are the best. Uh, their starting pitching's been great. They've won nine of ten, and, and they're a lineup, Gabe. They, they put the bat on the ball. They don't strike out a lot. They make you defend well. And this team is just, I mean, what, 33 and 17, 34 and 17 now? It's its pretty impressive what they've been able to do. And this is coming from a guy that bet their season win total under. So I could almost rip that ticket up right now, Gabe, unfortunately. But I've made some money back betting on them because I've caught this train. Carl Willis is their pitching coach. This guy deserves a race. He's guy amazing. deserves this guy deserves um, deserves more money. Unbelievable what he's been doing uh, with this staff. And you know, Drew, like I said, I, I a couple of years in a row, it's like, man, the Guardians aren't going to win that many games, and then they get there. So I learned my lesson, and I've stayed away. This next team, very impressive uh, start, considering they're such a big public team as well. The New York Yankees are the second most profitable team in Major League Baseball right now. The Kansas City Royals are the third most profitable team in baseball, exceeding expectations uh, so far. The Philadelphia Phillies are the fourth most profitable team coming into tonight. And another team similar to the Guardians that people downplay every year and say they're going to be bad every year, and even I thought they would be worse this year, the Milwaukee Brewers. of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense alliance and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 percent think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm -hmm. so in the same note i'm saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid it's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the magical line. and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes, it's every time. Game time decisions. Lucas is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I'm Renzi. Ten minutes left in the hockey game uh, right now. 2-1 for the Edmonton Oilers. And as far as the uh, the Boston Celtics are concerned, they handled their business tonight. You know, we just sort of got locked in. Man, I was close. I said 126-114. It was 126-110. Um, 
So I just had that feeling, man. It was like, yeah, Boston are probably going to win by double digit tonight. Like the Pacers will linger, but they're going to run out of gas. The same thing. It was pretty much the exact same thing that the Pacers did against the New York Knicks in the first two games. If you remember game one against the Knicks, they should have won. They fell apart in the last couple of minutes and they lost. Game two, they were hanging around and then they fell apart and they ended up like losing in the fourth quarter and losing by more. And then they were better at home. I still think the Pacers have a win or two left in them uh, when they get back uh, when they get back home. So two one in the in the hockey game. So we're talking about the most profitable baseball teams, top five profitable teams coming into tonight's play: the Cleveland Guardians, the New York Yankees, the Kansas City Royals, the Philadelphia Phillies, and the Milwaukee Brewers. The top five money burners in Major League uh, Baseball. Number one, Drew's Miami Marlins, <laughs> uh, right at the top of the list. Yes, down nearly fourteen hundred bucks already. Fourteen mm. units on the season, mm. or you're up fourteen if you're betting. That's a significant. That's, it's hard to lose that much this year. Yeah. The Chicago White Sox, who are getting murdered, who are on pace to be one of the worst baseball teams in the history of baseball. The uh, the White Sox are the second biggest money burners. The Houston Astros are the third biggest money burners. <laughs> The Cincinnati Reds are fourth. And, guys, the Reds were a team. They're always a trendy team, the Reds. Every year, people know the Reds are going to turn the corner. They're going to turn the corner. And I always remind people about this, that the Reds have had, like, one winning season in 20 years. So, right? They're the Reds. And, you know, yep. I know the past doesn't matter, but it's like it kind of does. It's like, yeah, they're going to have to prove it to me. And so I never really buy into the Red hype, but they've been worse uh, they've been a disappointment. I'll start with you, Drew, and you can get your take, uh, Cam, on the Reds. But, Drew, the Reds, did you buy into the hype coming into the year with the Reds? Because a lot of people did because they do have some good young players. N- not too much. They, they were really on my radar one way or the other, to tell you the truth, Gabe. But they did get that hot start, and sure enough, they find themselves just 20 and 30. They're also, what, 4 and 16 in the month of May? Man, this team is uh, heading in the wrong direction for sure. And talk about cold lineups by Team OPS over the last 10 days. They are 30 out of 30, so they, they they can't hit very much at all. And they've they've lost what nine straight series. Thanks for that, Tommy. Yeah, it, it's been it's been a rough go of it for Big Red Machine, Gabe. I'm guilty. Yeah, I've, been ca- I've been caught up in the playoffs. I should be betting against the Reds every damn day. Yeah, I'm lucky. That's why we do these segments to remind people. Because <laughs> I usually bet yeah. the Reds. I actually like that team, and I had them to win the division. Guilty as charged, but Kansas City's been nice, so. Peter Pace, Paul, I guess. But, the, hey, Gabe, you have the Blue Jays there not on that list. Number so the, five. the Blue Jays. Be there long. They're not going to be there long. The Blue Jays you know are the fifth biggest money burners. The Blue Jays people have been very disappointed in this team, especially people in Toronto, super negative, overly negative in my opinion. But the Leafs failures carry over, and then they take it out on the Blue Jays. It's like a cycle there of just frustration, and it just, it just keeps going. Um, but – if you'll notice, Vlad Guerrero has been hitting the baseball for the last three weeks or so. He's been playing good defense, too. Bo Bichette is going to come around, and he's starting to hit, and he, you know, he hit a home run the other night. It's pretty crazy, guys. The Blue Jays did not have a home run in the cleanup spot until two games ago when Bo Bichette really moved him around, and they finally hit a damn home run. You can't, you know, you're not going to win if you don't have one home run, from, especially from a team that's supposed to be so good offensively. But I think people overreacted a little bit in the sense that people were like, oh, trade everybody, fire everybody, trade, trade Guerrero, don't resign Bichette. It's like, guys, you're in effing May. Shut up. It's not even Memorial Day yet. And and you're only five games under 500. You're like two weeks away from all this being forgotten about. All you got to do is just go out, have fun, play baseball, go eight and two over the next 10. Next thing you know, everybody's like, hey, look at that. Hey, we're right back in it. And the schedule for the Toronto Blue Jays, guys. Look, they had the White Sox this week. I know they lost that one game 5 nothing, but they smoked them in the other games. They were favorites tonight. They roll into Detroit. Gossman was unbelievable. They smoked the Tigers. Uh, you got a four-game set here. You take three or four here. Then you get the White Sox again in Chicago next week. And then you get the Pittsburgh Pirates. This is it. Like, Schneider's job could be on the line. Everybody, like, the future of the Jays is sort of, I think the Jay players get this. They brought their home run jacket back, Cam. Um, I look for the Jays to win games, although you're not going to get value with them because they're playing bad teams. So they are going to be favorites. But 
I told everybody to chill out as far as the Jays are concerned uh, a couple of days ago, and they've won like three or four since I said that. It'll continue, Cam. They're going to beat these bad teams. Well, the bats have shown up, and you talked about it. Bichette had another uh, big day uh, against Detroit today. The concern is also the bullpen, and now that uh, Eric Swanson has uh, improved, that is essential for the Toronto Blue Jays. He's a great arm, and remember, they picked him up from Seattle. Romero's still a little bit iffy. If they can fix that part up too, Gabe, you know they're going to score, and if they can get the bullpen back to where it used to be, this team is going to be dangerous as hell. So, yes, they're a play-on team for sure. What do you think of tomorrow's game, Drew, the Blue Jays and the Tigers? I, I like the Jays. I, I, Manoa's on the hill. I mean, a pick em price tag, I'm actually kind of surprised by it because what he, overall he started off the season, that first start was rough, but since then he's actually pitched really well, uh, plus his road ERA at zero. He hasn't let up a run yet while pitching on the, run, on the road. He's up against uh, Matt Manning here who has near a five ERA, a high prospect, sure, but his, his kind of average numbers to date, he gave up 10 hits last time out. Um, they've lost four straight coming into this series. I, I actually like the Jays, and I like what you had to say about the schedule there, Gabe. I don't think a lot of people, including myself until recently, have noticed in baseball. You know, remember last year, we went away from playing your division opponents 18, 19 times. Now it's only 11 or 12 times. And what we're seeing more of is these teams playing the same team very close to each other, Gabe. So therefore, you know, with the Blue Jays getting You can make up ground, bro. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. get six games with the White Sox in a seven-game span. Exactly. You can make up some ground. You know what I'm saying? You can make up some ground. And then you're going to Detroit here, which is, like, right next to Toronto. A lot of Blue Jay fans there. Nice, you know, nice, short road trip. No reason why you can't. I'm not going to say you sweep them, but you win three or four. And and then the confidence is back. And then you get the Orioles, and then we'll find out. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on SportsGrid. And now you have to qualify and these majors, you, you just you gotta go do it, man. Like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like, I'm not. You know what you signed up for. So I, I don't like the pettiness. I'm um I I I a hundred percent think Taylor Gooch should be in the major championships. Mm -hmm. So in the same note I'm saying this, but also it's like, hey, this is the world in which we live in right now and, and you and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. All right, Drew's gonna, not going to be with us next week because he's traveling, but he's going to be setting up shop down the road. I look forward to some Mexican baseball picks, uh, Drew, as we got access to it. In fact, we got baseball games going on right now. I like their time, too. They're, they're always playing when the show is on right now. 
They're in the middle of their games uh, right now. And um, I look forward to your uh, your baseball insight. I enjoy the Mexican Baseball League and Soccer League. Oh, it's a great league. It really is. I mean, with the growth of the Mexican economy and, you know, they added baseball teams. The president, President Obrador of Mexico, he's a huge baseball fan. Uh, he's actually from Tabasco, which is a smaller kind of state there in Mexico. So look out. You know, we'll see if the, the Tabasco team can do things. I'm a Veracruz fan. I like Yucatan, the the Leones, the defending champions of the Be- Mexican Baseball League. But uh, overall, yeah, betting both soccer and baseball south of the border. I think, hey, if you got the time to do so, you can dig in deep. It is a uh, beatable market, and it's a fun one to watch for sure. And they do play late night. They, I think they're almost taking advantage of this, like, uh, you know, the, the growing play betting after. landscape. Yeah, yeah, let's play exactly. after Major League Baseball. There's sort of a landing spot, Cam, after Major League Baseball Smart. games. Excellent. Smart move. And uh, you guys are going to have to educate me because I'm not uh, really down with the Mexican League, but uh, I'll bet on anything. Like, I got the Washington Mystics tonight, so give me some Mexican baseball, please. Um, I would go on with the Mexican baseball, but Drew's got a bunch of baseball subs. We were talking about the uh, the Reds sucking. The Dodgers lost a couple of games to the D-backs in embarrassing fashion. I would expect the Dodgers to be in a bad mood tomorrow. And anytime I see the Dodgers at 60 cents, 65 cents through on biting, what are your thoughts on the Dodgers and the Reds game? Oh, we'll get uh we'll, we'll get we'll get we'll get Drew back. And oh my god. Oh yeah! Yeah! Sorry, Gabe. I needed that. <laughs> There's the uh the four and a half I was talking about though. Remember? Oh my go. god, it's four Damn. and a half, one run. Game to overtime, though. Game to overtime. Maybe we're going to overtime. I didn't overtime bet it to go to overtime. We talked oh, about it. Plus 280 was I, great odds. I didn't bet it because I'm on Edmonton. I, I hit it a little bit. Not as much as I should have, but uh, good call by you. Uh, well, Gabe, uh, it looks like uh, we might be heading to OT, my friend. Uh, you got your team. I got my team. I love you, buddy. We've been doing this thing for a while, but I'm very invested in the Dallas Stars. And no offense to Edmonton being a Canadian hockey team. I think more about paying my mortgage than them. I wouldn't be... <clears throat> Man, that was a big breakdown by the Oilers. Um, DeHarnay was lost. DeHarnay had his back to the play here. Sagan just should not have been that open all alone. Uh, absolutely zero, zero, zero fault of Skinner. I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised if Edmonton score, though. And, oh, mm-hmm. my God, they nearly just did. They got a breakaway, but Ottinger came up. Like, we've seen in the NHL, I'm just mad I didn't bet the four and a half to the over. I talked about the overtime, too. But I was like, man, this game could get to four and a half. All you need is one goal by Dallas. You get it. But then, boom, right after they score, Edmonton got a breakaway, nearly scored. I thought it was going in. It was a nice oh, goal, nice move. Wow, what a Ottinger, save. Ottinger, nice skate save. But now Kane just teed up a slap shot. Like I said, like the we, we've seen this. The oilers mm-hmm. Canuck series, guys. Like two of the games in a row, two of the three games, man, were decided in like the last 30 seconds a minute. The Oilers do not stop. Hell of a pad save there on Holloway. Man, got to lift the puck, bro. Lifts the damn puck. You got to lift the puck. Yeah, you do. Yep. That would have been a uh, that would have been a big turnaround after. But time and time again, goalies make the save. It's hard to lift the puck in that short of space. But Holloway had him beat. He just didn't lift the puck. He shot it right into the pad. But explosive, uh, explosive ending of this hockey game. And it looks like uh, overtime could be in play here. And I regret not betting the plus 280, but uh, we can't live in the past. Drew, yeah. Dodgers, Reds, who do you like tomorrow? Uh, Dodgers run line, Gabe. Not sure what, what you where I left off at, but uh, they've won five straight with Paxton on the hill. They're up against Ashcraft. He's not missing all that many bats. So going up against the number one lineup overall, Year to date, number two against righties. And keep in mind, guys, the big red machine. Mm-hmm. Well, down goes Drew Martin once again. Yeah. We've got, uh, yeah. 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 Now we've got techni- technical difficulties uh, with Drew. That's what happens when you join us from Florida. We have people <laughs> that join us from. Uh, we have people that join us from all over the world and stuff. Worst internet in America, Florida. Our guests Florida from Florida internet. always crack exactly. out. I like that over game and that Dodgers game too. It seems high, but uh, the Dodgers might put up like seven or eight themselves against Ashcraft. Uh, Drew's right. He's not been great. And uh, Paxton will give up a few runs. It seems like a high total, but I like the over and the Dodgers. Yeah. 
Uh, Rafael Esparza is going to step up in it. See what the internet in New Orleans is like.